Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you're watching this, know that I appreciate you. I am trying this for a third time. For a third time. Um, the topic is getting past it versus getting through it. And the blog is already live. So I'm grateful for that because it is live, it's up, it's active. Go read it. Um, but I wanted to get the video out now while I have an opportunity. Excuse me. Because the husband isn't home. And as I said before, this is the only time that I can get this done, this particular video done. I did go to church this morning and enjoyed myself yet again. It's the second time I visited this particular church and I really do like it. So um, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe I'll get the husband to go with me a couple of Sundays and see if he likes it too. And we'll go from there. Um, third time. Yeah. I've tried this two other times to get this video done and I was not happy with it. So let me get some house cleaning out of the way. Um, I have, and I do apologize if the video skips a little bit. I do apologize. Um, I tried to get this video done without editing it. So I will not be editing this video. Um, editing um, currently, and it is delaying. Uh, this particular video as I record it so I do apologize ahead of time um, it just takes too long to get videos edited which is why I try to do this particular video without editing um, product up, um, because that's uh, shorter than trying to edit the video um, than yeah, it's shorter than trying. So that's one thing. Forgive the interruptions or the the stalling if there is any, because there is a video editing behind it. It should have been done by the time I done, and it's still telling me it's going to take another two hours, which is ridiculous to me. Um, the other thing is, I do have my little desk fan going because. Uh, I did not turn the air on and you know with hot flashes and all it gets a little too hot so I need the fan um, and there was a third thing that I can't think of what I can't remember right now what it was oh my I'm over a cold so I will be cleaning my throat from time to time I may cough a couple of times you may see an enormous cup and take a sip a few times because I need it uh, so yeah that's all the housekeeping out of the way forgive any background noise you may hear my neighbors are moving about so you may hear some intermittent voices with the topic getting past it versus getting through it um, we have all at some point or time either been told or have told someone that they will get over something, they will get past something, they will get through something. Um, whatever the case may be, it could have been a failed relationship, it could have been a job, the loss of a car, um, could have been a marriage ending, it could have been a promotion that you didn't get. It will get past you. Um, but when we say that, what are we what are we really saying? When we hear that, what are we really hearing? Um, so that what are we really saying? Something what what are, we, what are we really saying when we say that? What do those two terms really mean? Um, I first uh, had this downloaded into me 
I thought it was an awesome topic. And then I started looking up the definitions of those two words, past and through, and realized that they are very similar in definition depending on where you look. And a little doubt began to creep in. Okay, people aren't going to get it because they are so similar, but I was able to find definitions that gave a little bit broader I don't want to say broader because that's not what I'm really trying to say. They gave definitions that demonstrated more of a difference than a similarity between these two words. That's what I want to say. So the word past. To move or cause to move in a specific direction. To go past or across, leave behind or on one side in proceeding. And then the word through, moving in one side and out of the other side of an opening, channel, or location. Um, so now that that's clear, and I've talked about what the situations could be, um, I have to talk about what those, what this thing looks like to me. And the example that I use in the blog is um, a, a friendship that ended. Just because it was easier to talk about a friendship ending than it was to talk about something a little bit more deep like the loss of a loved one um, or the, the ending of a marriage. Um, it just was a lot easier for time's sake to discuss that thing versus the others. So what the situation or circumstance or the ending of a thing looked like to me um, was a boulder. And when we end a friendship, however that friendship ended, we have the opportunity or the option to walk around it, walk over it, or go through it. And when we walk around it or over it, we're not really focusing on what the obstacle is. We are more focused on what we should have said, what we could have said, what we thought it was supposed to be um, versus what it actually is. We as humans do, we talk to ourselves about you know, what we could have said, what we should have said. Um, don't they realize I did this for them? How dare they? So on and so forth. Yes. The anger, the hurt is pumping in us and we are not focused on the friendship or relationship itself. We're focused on how we feel about it. So we're going around it without really looking at it or we're going over it without really looking at it. Um, but if we were to chisel our way through that folder, we are forced to deal with it. We are forced to look at it because we are putting in the effort to get through it. Um, so we picked up a pickaxe, we're hammering away, we're chiseling away, and layer by layer by layer is being revealed. And each of those layers is revealing who we are and the role that we played in that friendship ending. Whether we want to or not, whether it feels good or not, whether it's pleasant or not, it forces us to do that. Now, I've done it several times. One of the things that I have done after every failed relationship, including friendships, um, is examine what role I play in that thing not working. Um, because when you're going through it, you have to ask yourself hard questions. You have to ask yourself who you were, what role you played. And that's not always easy because you've got to be honest. And honesty sometimes hurts. It sometimes hurts. So I had to do that after every relationship ended in order for me to be a better person on the other side of that relationship ending. 
Um, and I, it wasn't easy. I had to do it with God. I had to do it in prayer. I had to continuously ask God to give me the strength to get through that thing. Because it just isn't the easiest thing to go. We have to ask ourselves who, what role we played. I'm, I'm repeating that because it's so important. What role we played in that friendship ending. Were we the one that was uncompromising? Were we the one that compromised too much? Were we the one that was always negative? Or were we the one that refused to see the negative in a thing? Were we the one that, you know, had something bad to say about everybody? Um, or were we the one that allowed that other person to have, you know, to say something bad about everybody and not speak up? Did we belittle the person? Did they belittle us? What role did we play? Were we the yes woman or did we require they be the yes woman to us? Did we give them a false sense of superiority? Or were we walking in a false sense of superiority? Who were we? I, in a particular relationship, had to end it because I saw where it was going. Um, and it was not beneficial to either one of us. Uh, in one of my other videos, I spoke about the relationship, but on this one, I'll speak on the one where the man wanted to actually marry me, and I said no. And I didn't think at the time that I was taking advantage of this person, but as I began to examine the relationship after it ended, I realized that that's exactly what I was doing. I was taking advantage of their kindness. and their desire to be with someone, um, their desire to not be alone for the rest of their lives, I was taking advantage of that and using it for my benefit and it just wasn't right. Plain and simple, it wasn't right. So I had to, after ending it, come to terms with who I was in that relationship and work on those flaws so that I did not repeat them in a future relationship. So to me, getting past it or getting over it doesn't really allow you to come to such a conclusion. But getting through it, chiseling your way through that thing forces you to get to that conclusion. Was it pleasant for me to realize that after all of these years of <clears throat> considering myself to be a good person, was it easy for me to realize that I had actually been one taking advantage of another? No, it wasn't. However, I'm glad that I was able to see that thing. I'm glad, that, um, of course, by God, so that with God's help, I could become a better person um, and apologize to them for taking advantage of them for as long as I did, whether I knew that that's what I was doing at the time or not, um, and wishing them the best in their life. Um, yeah, getting, getting through a thing to me says so much more than getting past it or getting over it. It, I think, requires you to really examine so much more of who you are, um, not just who that other person is, because it's easy to focus on that other person and what they did wrong um, or, or what we didn't like about them. It's so much easier to focus on them and their flaws uh, when we're getting past it or over it. But if we're going through it, it truly and truly and truly forces us to see who we are excuse me, in the role that we play in that thing ending. Um, so yes, of course, there are scriptures that go along with all of this. And I will, I will read, I will tell you what all the scriptures are, but I will only read one or two of them. Uh, Psalms 27 and 1, Isaiah 41 and 13, 1 Peter, oh, I can actually read it from here, 1 Peter, uh, 
7, 7, Romans 5, verses 3 through 5, uh, and then also Romans 8, verses 17 through 18, Philippians 4 and 13, James chapter 1, verse 12, as well as James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, um, Romans 8 and 28, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, chapter 3, verses 5 through 6, and Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. So I'm going to read two, uh, Psalms 27 and 1, Psalms 27 and 1, The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Um, and that basically says that as long as the God is lighting your path, as long as you know that God is lighting your path, and He is your salvation, and He is your stronghold, dealing with who you are um, yeah it's a little scary but you don't have to be afraid because you do know that on that thing you will be a better person you will be a better person hopefully you will be a better person and then let me find the other I want to make sure this is the one that I was thinking about before I read it or before I say it um, no, that's not it. Romans 8 and 28 is one of the ones that I have an asterisk, asterisk, asterisk by, but that's not the one that I want to read. Um, yeah, okay. Philippians 4 verses 6 and 7 do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus and that says to me that if you are asking God to help you get through a situation he indeed will do that if you petition him with gratitude for going through something yes it's not pleasant but there is a lesson in it and you have to be thankful for the lesson on the other side of it so with gratitude and in prayer ask him to assist you in this and his peace that no man can understand will guard your heart and your mind and you'll make it through to the other side so with that, I will say, peace and blessings. Remember to walk in your purpose and know that I appreciate you.